Hello, viewers. I'm Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering. I'd like to give you a brief review of one of the feature stories we're working on for the February issue. One problem the wind industry deals with is that if the wind is blowing, but the grid can't accept the power it's generating, the power is lost and the revenue it might have produced is gone. Now, utility companies have a related problem. For instance, if you examine a load uh, curve over the 24 hour course, such as this one, you'll see a trace that looks like a roller coaster. Demand for electric power starts rising about 5 p.m. each day, peaks about 9 p.m., and declines to a low of about, at about 2 p.m., 2 a.m. Look closer and you see almost demand changing by the second. So there are two problems here. One comes from having to deal with large changes as demand grows and slackens throughout a 24-hour period. And the other is almost second-by-second second change demand that leads to frequency variations on the line. For instance, in periods of low demand, the frequency of the line rises over 60 hertz. And when loads come online, turbines slow and the line frequency drops. This can cause trouble with some customer equipment. The wind industry offers a partial solution by providing some power during high demand periods. This so-called peak shaving is not a perfect solution because even winds could be in, an, in a lull when the power is needed. Now, if there's a way to store the excess power regardless of source, it would let the wind plants put more turbines online for longer periods, so boilers could throttle back and save on fossil fuels. Short-term power shortage will also let the utilities really smooth out the power curve so the line frequencies stay much closer to 60 hertz. There are a few candidate technologies for these jobs, and they include compressed air, flywheels, and large batteries. Let's take a look at each. A company called Energy Storage and Power has patented a method called Compressed Air Energy Storage, or CAES, for storing compressed air. This technique is one proposed solution of the peak demand that occurs late in the day. The idea has the advantage in that one site for the first generation of CAES is a 110 megawatt plant in Alabama. It's been operating for 17 years. The equipment used for compressing and delivering air scales from about 15 megawatts with above ground storage to over 400 megawatts when underground storage is available. Pressure from underground storage can reach 800 PSI and provide a delivery rate of about 500 pounds per second. In general, the equipment has to compress air for about 90 minutes to provide 60 minutes of generation. Then there are flywheels. These generally use a carbon fiber composite rim levitated on magnetic bearings and operating in a near frictionless vacuum. The construction lets the flywheel spin at speeds of 16,000 RPM. To reach operational speeds, this unit draws surplus electricity from the grid to power a permanent magnet motor. The flywheel can spin for extended periods because friction and drag are reduced by the magnetic bearings in the vacuum. A series of flywheels would provide a megawatt hour size storage. When a grid needs power and momentum from the spinning flywheels to drive their generator to convert kinetic energy into electrical energy. One design from Beacon Power Corporation near Boston can store and deliver 25 kilowatt hours and can go from full charge to discharge in 20, 15 minutes. These would be used for, to smooth out the jagged demand changes because they can switch from charging to discharging in a second or two. To test the flywheels, the New York State Public Service Commission is building an array of them that will store 20 megawatt hours for frequency variations. And lastly, there are the batteries, big batteries. For example, one from ZBB Energy in Wisconsin can store 50 kilowatt hours. It sits on about a four foot by four foot pallet and stands about seven feet high. At least four designs for large batteries are getting attention. One uses sodium sulfur, one is lithium based. ZBBs use a zinc bromide solution. A fourth promises to, to soon leave the lab at a lower cost than the others, according to the inventor. North Carolina's Duke Energy said it plans to match a $22 million federal grant to test batteries as devices for storing wind energy generated by one of the wind farms. In general, these batteries differ from conventional designs because the electrodes are fluid and the electrolyte is solid. In a conventional lead acid battery, the electrodes are solid and the electrolyte is liquid. Now, the batteries will be used to address both of the utility company problems, that is, large amounts for peak shearing and frequency control. Well, that's the overview. For more details, look for the February issue of Wind Power Engineering.